of. I mean, there's plenty of people who would take part in a Mr. Beast All right, video. what do we got on TV today? I don't know why they feel the need to. No thanks. Oh, okay. Oh, hey, no other tell guy. So, you want to know what wasn't on my 2024 bingo card this year? Uh, it was uh, Uncovering an Undertale Analog Horror. Now, this is created by Dr. Flying Fish on YouTube. Uh, currently, it's about a five-part series right now. It does say it's season one. So, Dr. Flying Fish, if you're watching this, if you're listening, we're expecting a season two. Okay, we're it. Hold on. Your two eyes, Dr. Flying Fish, your two ears, listen to me. We're expecting season two. So it starts out with people going missing. So far, there's been about seven disappearances. The last one, it says uh, disappeared 15-9, which is the British way of doing it or the other people way of doing it. Everybody knows month, day, year, superior way, period. There's not, a, not up for debate, but people are going missing. They can't find them anywhere. The police are looking. There's absolutely no trace of them. The only place they can think of, and they don't even want to imagine this, is that these people have been falling into the hole at the top of Mount Abbott. Now, the depth of this hole is about a thousand feet, so the odds of you falling in and surviving are slim to none. It goes on, explains the history of the humans and the monsters, the war that they fought, and the monsters being, you know, pushed down into the underground to live out the rest of their days and uh, trapped behind a barrier. So that's fun. Right, then in part two, it goes over a little bit of what had happened. Um, this tape is going out to specific members of some unmarked, I mean, it's marked, but it's blacked out, uh, group of people. So we've got Officer Connors, blanked out last name for posterity and protection. We have Scott and Jeffrey, the two cave divers that will be going into the hole in Mount Abbott. 
Um, Scott, who is the essential team leader of these two, is in direct communication with Officer Connors, kind of giving him a play-by-play -play of what's going on. Uh, before the two men head into the cave, they kind of get a brief rundown with Officer Connors, explaining, um, you know, how, how these people could have fallen, the history of the monsters and the humans, and then they make their descent. They get to the bottom and they realize that this cave is a lot bigger than they thought. Like, way bigger. Like, if these people survived, they'd, they'd be lost like, easily without any kind of direct communication. The only thing they have is the light from basically a pin light from the top of the, the hole. Like, a thousand feet down, it's going to be like looking through a straw. There's no shot they're going to be able to see anything. So, Scott and Jeffrey. They're making their way through, making their way downtown. They're walking fast. Their face is past. They're homebound. And Scott is taking pictures. It seems like they're in some kind of old abandoned ruins. Um, Scott's explaining, you know, or talking to Officer Connor saying, Hey, do you remember the history of the monsters and how they're all down here? Basically saying like oh aren't they bad aren't they evil don't they kill things kill people are we prey and they just are bantering back and forth as they make their way deeper into this cave slash ruins scott takes another picture sends it over to officer connor shows him i believe he's showing him it could this could be post i could be messing up the timeline but for posterity and for right now he's sending it directly to him getting these pictures and it's, it's starting to look like buildings so it pretty much solidifies the fact that this is these are ruins of at least some sort they continue on they're making their small talk they're chatting back and forth being bros being big guys just guys being dudes when scott goes silent for a moment officer connor's trying to get a hold of him finally he does scott says that jeffrey's being eaten 
Connors tries to get more clarification and Scott begins to panic. Justifiably so. Your friend's being eaten. I think anybody in that case would be like, ah, peace, bro, and dip the fuck out. Like, there's, I'm sorry, I, I wouldn't stay. If something's being, if something's eating you and I don't have a means of, like, shooting it, or at least a, an axe or a sword so I can go out trying to save you, peace, bro. Jeffrey's being eaten. Scott begins to panic. He begins to run to get the fuck out of there because this monster begins to chase him. All we hear for the next brief moments is Scott frantically running to save his own life. When the audio cuts, starts to become garbled and it sounds like someone's screaming over the headset. It goes silent as Connors is trying to reach Scott. Scott! Scott! Nothing. And then we get this. But hey, thank you guys for watching. I appreciate it so much. If you could, if you haven't before, hit that subscribe button, hit the like button, leave a comment letting me know if you enjoy this kind of video, if you want to see more analog horror based on your favorite video games or media content. But seriously, hit that like button, smash the subscribe button, kiss the subscribe button, rub it gently, massage it, do whatever you need to do, but throw your boy a bone here, you know. You don't have to, but you know, you should. Pretty cool. All right, so now we have part three, which goes over monster kind. It goes over the war between humans and monsters a little bit, or more fleshed out than the beginning. 
in part one where it kind of talked about it briefly. This goes over it pretty much in its entirety. Goes over the different little districts of Mount Ebbet. Over this bill, we will tell you the chronological history of our kind dropped in the underground. From the times we ruled the earth to the present day. Prepare yourself for quite the ride into our history. Long, long time ago, monsters ruled the overworld with another race called humans. For centuries, the two races ruled the Earth in peace and harmony. Unfortunately, it didn't last forever. A long and brutal war sparked between the two races, where humans were victorious. The rest of the monsters that were killed in the plains of war were sent down under the Mount of Bart. Humans, with a magic spell, sealed the only way out of the underground with a magical barrier that hasn't been removed to this day. Reasons for it being the magic that is too complicated and strong to be removed by the magic of monsters. But the monsters slowly adapted to the new habitat and built a new civilization that the world had never seen before. The capital city was soon built near the barrier so that monsters could live and look at the sealed exit with hope of getting out one day. A century later, monsters went deeper into the underground. Surprisingly, the underground was much bigger than our ancestors thought, making them go more deeper and inhabiting more areas. The new and the second capital city was soon built in the deeper part of the underground, so that monsters could not also live but explore more parts of the underground without having to walk long distances from the old capital. By being trapped in the underground, with the help of the magic, the new nation quickly became habitable for all inhabitants. With magic, many inhabitable places were terraformed to the great places to live. The waterfall for the sea lovers, Hotland for hot folks, and Snowden for those that preferred cold weather. Our civilization became more and more advanced. In the early 1500s, the building of the most important structure in the underground has begun. This structure heats the entire underground, filters the air, and also works as a storage facility and also as a magic generator. This structure got the name Core. Thanks to the Core, it is possible to live in every part of the underground without worrying about anything. The Core spreads such things as food and electricity through the entire underground making the life of our kind easier. Without the creation of the core, monsters wouldn't have evolved that much and that fast in such things like magic and technology. And maybe even without it, we would have been evolved as much more different creatures than what we are today. Considering that we as species, we evolve much faster than for example humans. Our evolution obviously also depends on the place where we live and the conditions of the place. In our current time, the underground is a prosperous, beautiful, and a great place not only to live, but to wait for the day when our kind will finally be freed from the underground and finally see the sun above our heads again. All of the different areas that the monsters are able to go in, and then it also focuses in on the core of Mount Ebbet. Now this core is what gives, I'm assuming, the energy to all the creatures, the denizens of the underground, allows them light, gives them heat and AC, because I'm assuming it's underground, it probably gets hot sometimes. And it all seems pretty normal until the very last couple frames of part three, and it looks like the core had a meltdown. That day will come. And monsters will prevail once again. Thank you for your attention and have a great time. May the Lord save us and help us rise again. up on a blazing inferno going on the aftermath of the core meltdown showing the absolute destruction and carnage 
that is happening due to this core meltdown. It's insane. And then right after the footage is shown, we get a synopsis of people essentially talking about what they could have done, what they should have done. We could have gotten the water from the waterfall. Since the region has enough water to put out a fire two times larger than the one we're dealing with. Heck, the whole underground should be helping us to put the fire out, but no! The king doesn't let us get the water from the waterfall since it will waste the water supplies of the neighboring region. And that this fire isn't much of a threat as we hotlanders describe it. Does he even see what is happening here? The whole hotland turned into one massive bonfire. Everything is burning. Even the waterfall and the cities near the old capital are on fire. But this bastard is hiding in his palace and doesn't see what is going on. He probably doesn't even know that soon this whole disaster will affect every living soul in here very soon. After that disgruntled denizen is done having his rant, we come to Asgore and Toriel talking about what's going on, talking about the lack of food and how they're... As, that Asgore actually is not doing a great job of rationing out supplies. Tori, are you okay? No, I'm not. For the past two weeks, I've been trying to come up with any ideas on how to fix the situation, yet no good ideas come up in my head. Well, Tori, you should not stress out that much. You need to rest. You've been looking awfully exhausted lately. I can't rest. Asko, do you even realize what is happening? The core is gone. It exploded, and two-thirds of the territory of Hotland is in ruins from the shockwave or fire. And that's not it. The whole underground is suffering from the migration crisis. The civilians from Hotland are running to the waterfall or the capital. There are dozens of monsters stuck in the border of the capital because there are just too much of them coming. There have been also high numbers of clashes between the civilians and the guards. Oh, and how could I forget? Since the core is gone, Magic is now dangerously limited. Without the core, we can't generate food or magic. We can't have electricity or filtration of the air. But we don't need core to make food. Ask or... So that everyone can eat, people are beginning to starve and go hungry. And it's starting to really grate on Toriel because she feels that Asgore isn't sufficiently doing what he should be doing as king. He's allowing his people to starve and die and suffer and go hungry during this this tumultuous time where they're dealing with a huge disaster, the fallout from it. The two end up getting into bigger and bigger arguments as their little girl enters the room and they both realize they need to come together and think up something to do here. Do you really not understand the whole situation? Are you really that ignorant and naive? What about the electricity? Without it, you can't make anything nowadays. There have been reports of monsters suffering from famine in the most distant parts of the underground because not only they don't have any connections with the core, but also they are suffering from the loss of electricity. You should be the one thinking about how to fix that. I ordered to organize the refugee camps, also the evacuation centers in Hotland so that there will be less injured civilians. Did you think about how to save your people from starvation? Uh, I did, but I... What do you mean, what? You didn't think of that? Look at me! I've been eating as little as possible so that Kara and Azriel could eat more. And you didn't think of how to make something so that everyone could eat as much as they want. Toya, I'm trying. You don't give a shit about your own people. That's not true. Oh, uh, nothing serious, dear. Go back to sleep now. I will evacuate everyone from Hotland, and then order the royal scientists to find any solution to fix the core. I wish I could believe you, Asgore. We then get another shot where it comes to the daily news going over essentially the damage totals, the 
the deaths that have been caused by this giant explosion and and during this explosion while they've been fighting it and dealing with all of this fallout and aftermath there's starting to be an epidemic of sorts that is causing the people to lose their minds and go crazy and do things that they wouldn't normally do the busiest and most important parts of the two capitals a week ago has been reported that the flu and COVID pandemic has broken out in the regions that were the most affected by the crisis. Lack of food, electricity, magic, and other important supplies have caused the most severe humanitarian crisis that our kind has never seen before. The royal scientists have been working hard on trying to restore the core, but it can take years for the core to finally be fully restored. It. Considering what is happening right now in the underground, it seems like a lot of monsters won't live long for that moment. And we wonder, what we will do now? How are we gonna live? This is the question that everyone is asking. But the most realistic and, unfortunately, the worst case scenario is that we will go back to the Stone Age. Or even maybe, at that time, there won't be anyone left. So during the broadcast, the news anchor goes over the areas, the hotbed of damage, you know, red, yellow, green. Red being the core, where the most damage has happened, absolute devastation. Yellow not as affected, still affected, still got some shit wrong, like electricity's out, um, people are still distraught, there's food shortages everywhere, and then we have green. Green is where an epidemic of the flu had broken out, and people are getting sick, dropping dead, losing their minds, just everything is turning into a perfect storm down in the underground. And it has quickly become much too difficult for everyone to be able to deal with. Now, they have scientists going down to the core to attempt to fix it, but they report back that it could take years for the core to be fixed. They don't have years. They might not even have months at this point. It then comes to a page that states that this is only viewable by the royal family. If you do not have express permission to view this, you are unauthorized to watch what you're about to see. And it talks about Kara Dreamer, Toriel and Asgore's adopted daughter. And it talks that a week after the explosion, she got terribly sick. And shortly after, she passed away due to that. They buried her out in the family's garden with these the yellow flowers that were her absolute favorite. And they mourned as long as they could. But this is what caused Toriel to snap. I think everything that led up to this makes sense for why she snapped and lost her mind is because you have an epidemic. You have a giant meltdown explosion that's wreaking havoc among all of the people that you rule over. It's affecting your family. It's affecting your friend's family, everyone. And then one of your children that you've raised passes away because you're not able to get the correct medicine to take care of them and help them feel better. So Toriel breaks, completely snaps. Now with that, it makes me wonder, Scott and Jeffrey, that picture that it, it, it paused on, was that Toriel down there? Were they in her old ruins her old house is that what that was i don't know maybe we'll find out
And now we come on to a scene where Asgore just gets home. He's looking for his beautiful wife, Toriel. He's made some progress. Him and the scientists have made some progress and he's excited. He goes to try and tell her, but he can't find her. Toriel home. I was talking with Dr. Alphys and it seems like we could fix the court earlier than we thought. But we could finish it before we will lose more of our civilians. Tori? Hello? Is anyone home? He's looking all over the house. Can't seem to find her. He's calling out to her. She doesn't answer. Starts to worry. Until he finally goes into a room where he starts to hear chew chewing? Oh, Tori, here you are. Did you hear what I told you? Oh, God. It's Toriel. She's completely lost her. Oh, man. She's completely lost her mind. She's eating their son. The hunger got to her so bad that she reverted to her most base, primal monster instincts and is just eating. She sees Asgore and begins to cry and apologizing that she was just so hungry she, she couldn't take it anymore. And she repeats it over and over. And then we end on this. We end on them playing a song that is about hope to try to inspire the population of the underground to try to instill a little hope into the people to bring up their spirits as we get a breakdown of what happened after Asgore walked in on Toriel eating their son. Like towards the royal family among the civilians and still shocked quite a lot of people. King Asgore I ordered the guards to deport Queen Toriel and lock her into the new capital, the city that was slowly turning into abandoned ruins. The king himself fell into severe depression. He isolated himself from everyone and everything by locking himself in his own throne hall. Nobody saw him in person ever again. The royal family is gone. The kingdom of monster kind is gone. What a saddening end to such a powerful race.
So did you catch that? He had Queen Toriel deported to the new capital, which was quickly becoming the abandoned ruins. And what were Jeffrey and Scott exploring earlier? The abandoned ruins. So Toriel absolutely lost her mind to the point where she's just a primal beast. She sees meat, she eats meat. And she's been killing people. Those seven lost hikers, climbers, I think we can assume what happened to them. Jeffrey and Scott, well, we know what happened to them. Now, there is one more episode, but I am not going to play that for you guys. I will have a link down below to Dr. Flying Fish's channel so that you can watch this series on his channel. I want to try to, to, to boost this guy as much as I can, or, or ma'am, or whomever. I want to boost this person as much as I can because I want a season two. This is cool. So if you enjoyed this, obviously subscribe, like my, like my video, comment that you liked it. Say, I liked it, Chris. Awesome job. Thumbs up. Make sure you thumbs up and then go over to Dr. Flying Fish. Finish this out. Watch that last episode because it's fucking nuts. It's crazy, but this is great. I love this, this, this. It started out slow because it had, you know, just a lot of exposition and then it started rampant. I started getting chills about halfway through the second part. I'm stoked to see if Dr. Flying Fish is going to keep going with this. So if you're excited about it, head on over to his, their channel. Sorry, their channel and just give it a look. It's great shit. It's awesome. It's well done. I like it. I like it. I'm having a good time with it. But. That's going to do it for the video today. I hope you guys liked it. Again, do all that stuff. Notification bell, blah, 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 blah. Be awesome people. Be cool people. Have a good night. And don't let the big bugs bite. Bye.